Hello, you're watching HW News. This is me, Anusha. Let's have a quick look at the headlines today. After months of efforts, India has got consular access to Kulbushan Jadav today. This will be for two hour long meeting. The access has been given in accordance with the International Court of Justice verdict delivered on July 17th. Now, Pakistan on Sunday said it will grant consular access to Kulbushan Jadav, who is on death row in the country. Now, in a tweet, Pakistan Foreign Office spokesperson Mohammed Faisal has said that consular access for Indian spy commander. Kulbushan Jadav, a serving Indian naval officer and raw operative, is being provided on Monday, on 2nd of September of 2019, in line with Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, ICJ, Judgment and the Law of Pakistan. Now, ICJ, in its ruling on July 17th, had put on continued stay the death sentence handed to Kulbushan Jadav for alleged espionage now earlier pakistan had offered consular access on august 1st but with conditions that one pakistani official would be present alongside with india now eminent historian and padma bhushan awardee romila thapar has been reportedly asked by the center to submit her cv so that it can consider if she can continue as a professor in jawaharlal nehru university however later union high ed higher education secretary r subramanian clarified that by asking for her bio data the university was only following the provisions of ordinance and that there was no move to discontinue anyone's professor emeritus status and according to report, JNU Registrar Pramod Kumar last month wrote to the 87-year-old Thapar and asked her to submit her bio data so that the committee appointed by the university could evaluate her work and decide whether she should continue as Professor Emerita. Romila Thapar, one of the most celebrated historians in India, has been a professor of JNU for several decades before she was given the prestigious position as an emeritus at JNU. The 87-year-old Romila Thapur, who has been a vocal critic of Modi government and its policies, has been asked by the university administration to submit her CV for further consideration. The report further said that the move has shocked many JNU professors who said that the emeritus professors are never asked to submit their CVs. Now, in an open letter published on the Indian Cultural Forum back in April 2019, writers including late Girish Karnad, Arundhati Roy, Amitav Ghosh and Romila Thapar said that hate politics was being used to divide the country to create fear and increasingly exclude a more number of people from living in full-fledged citizen. Now, moving on, BJP National General Secretary Ram Madhav urged Indians to stop looking at Kashmir from a prism of Pakistan as Imran Khan continues his attack on the country. Taking a dig at political parties opposing the scrapping of Article 370, the constitutional provisions giving special status to Jammu and Kashmir, Ram Mahadev has said that the issue should not be looked at from the prism of Pakistan. He further claimed that Pakistan was peaceful not because of the presence of security forces, but because people realized that Prime Minister Narendra Modi was working to ensure the development and equal opportunities for all in the state. His comments came even as Pakistan Prime Minister continued his attack on India with NRC, now figuring on his list. 35A, which was again inserted into our constitution through a back door in 1954. It declares that there are two classes of people in Jammu Kashmir. One class is called state subjects. They are citizens of the state. The other class are uh, all others Jinnah propagated a two-nation theory. Result was India was partitioned into India and Pakistan. Sheikh Abdullah had propagated three-nation theory. He said India hai, Pakistan hai, Kashmir separate. Today, Thanks to Modi ji, thanks to Amit Shah ji, we have done away with this three-nation theory also. We have decimated this three-nation theory also. Now, Union Home Minister Amit Shah on Sunday took a dig at the Congress and Sharad Pawar's NCP in Maharashtra over their party leaders joining the Bhatia Janta Party in droves ahead of the state election due later this year. 
The BJP president was in South Maharashtra at Solapur addressing the yatra launched by Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis ahead of the state assembly elections. Now, both the parties, especially the NCP, have witnessed a number of defections to the ruling Shiv Sena and BJP. <laughs> अगर दादा पार्टी पूरा दरवाजा भाजपा का खोल दे तो शरद राव और गुजरात चौहान के राज में कोई कांग्रेस और एनसीपी में दिखाई नहीं देगा सारे के सारे इतने स्थिति क्यों इतने साल की राजनीति इतने साल का मुख्यमंत्री रहे अभी अभी पंद्रह साल सरकार चलाई मगर आपने अपने परिवार की चिंता की हमारे मुख्यमंत्री ने महाराष्ट्र की जनता की चिंता करी इसलिए सब लोग आज भारतीय जनता पार्टी से जुड़ना चाहते हैं तो मैं एक ही उदाहरण देना चाहता हूं लंबी बात करना नहीं चाहता भ्रष्टाचार पर शरद राव के नेतृत्व में कांग्रेस के नेतृत्व में यहां सरकार बनी अजित पवार शरद राव के भतीजे खासम खास सिंचाई मंत्री बने चौहत्तर हजार करोड़ रुपया सिंचन के लिए आवंटित किया एक बूंद पानी महाराष्ट्र के किसानों के खेत में नहीं पहुंचा आप लोगों को याद है या नहीं है जरा जोर से बोलो याद है या नहीं है जनता जब हमें जनादेश देती है तो पल पल और पाई पाई का हिसाब लेकर जाते हैं करते नहीं भाई देवेंद्र दो चरण समाप्त करें तीसरा भी समाप्त करेंगे 160 से ज्यादा विधानसभाओं के अंदर जाकर अपने पांच साल के समय का और एक एक पैसे का हिसाब देने के लिए निकले अगर आपने हिसाब मांगा है मैं आपको हिसाब देवेंद्र तो दे देंगे हिसाब मगर शरद पवार जी आप सुन रहे हैं तो कल जरा प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस कर हिसाब दीजिए पंद्रह साल आपकी सरकार चली केंद्र के अंदर दस साल आपकी सरकार चली आपने महाराष्ट्र को क्या दिया जो जब यूपीए की सरकार केंद्र के अंदर चल रही थी यहां पर भी एनसीपी कांग्रेस की आधारित की सरकार चल रही थी केरल के वित्त आयोग के अंदर महाराष्ट्र को एक लाख पंद्रह हजार करोड़ रुपया दिया मैं फिर से बोलता हूं सोलापुर वाले आंकड़े याद रखे शरद राम जब यहां आए तब पूछना है आपको पूछोगे क्या जोर से बोलो पूछोगे क्या केरल में वित्त आयोग में रुपया दिया था एक लाख पंद्रह हजार करोड़ कितना दिया था भाई बरबर याद रह गया है अब मोदी जी की सरकार चौदह में बनाई देवेंद्र की सरकार आपने पंद्रह में बनाई ये दोनों सरकारें आई केंद्र सरकार ने महाराष्ट्र को एक लाख पंद्रह हजार से बढ़ाकर दो लाख छियासी हजार तीन सौ चौपन करोड़ रुपया देने का काम क्या इतना से ज्यादा अधिक पैसा हमने दिया है और जब केंद्र यहां पैसा भेजता है आपका जमाना था सौ पैसा भेजते थे पचासी पैसा चाऊ हो जाता था आपके ही प्रधानमंत्री ने कहा था मोदी जी सौ रुपया भेजते हैं देवेंद्र फडणवीस एक सौ पच्चीस पैसे का काम करते एक सौ पच्चीस रूपये का काम पच्चीस रूपया लोगों के पास से लाकर जन भागीदारी से जोड़ने का काम ये महाराष्ट्र की सरकार कर Now moving on to elderly farmers fall at the feet of a revenue officer in Telangana begging him to help them. Now in a video you can see that had been widely circulated online in the clip which is from Ranga Reddy district the farmers can be heard pleading with the officer not to take away their livelihood and the land. The officer is seen simply walking away in this video the two brothers who are both farmers by profession was heard saying that their land documents which is proof of their land entitlement was taken away after a physical verification and alleged that they were harassed as well 
Multiple such cases have emerged in the last few months in which the process of computerization and posting of land records online aimed at transparency seems to have become a way of harassing the farmers. Mistakes have cropped up in many of these records put online. Farmers alleges that to have these errors corrected, now they are forced to pay bribes as well. Now, ISRO's second moon mission, Chandrayaan-2, is all set to release its lunar lander, Vikram, today after performing five orbit maneuver around the moon. The final and the fifth lunar bound orbit maneuver for the Chandrayaan-2 was successfully performed on Sunday. The next step for Chandrayaan-2 is very crucial as it involves the separation of its Vikram lander from the spacecraft's orbiter. The separation will take place today between 12.45 and 1.45 hours. And for more news updates, log on to www.hwnews.in.